This is James Fox with another video tutorial for QuickBooks Pro 2013. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to receive inventory that was ordered from a vendor and create a bill for the related inventory. Now in Lesson 8-5, I showed you how to create a purchase order which was used to place an order for the inventory. Now the inventory has arrived and we need to account for the inventory and create a bill based on the invoice that was received from the vendor. So let's go ahead and receive the inventory and create a bill for the inventory that we just received. So to do that, click on the Receive Inventory icon here and then click Receive Inventory with Bill. Or you can click on the Vendors menu and then click Receive Items and Enter Bill. Okay, now if you have created a purchase order for the items that you just received, click the Select Purchase Order button right above the bill. Now you're going to see the Open Purchase Orders dialog box. In the Vendor field, select the name of the vendor from the drop-down list and you will see all of the open purchase orders for that vendor. Place a check mark in the far left column next to the purchase order that was used to place the order and then you will click OK on the right. Now I'm going to click Cancel because I want to show you another way of doing this. In the Vendor field directly on the bill, type in the name of the vendor and when you press the Tab key on your keyboard, you will receive a notification stating that Open Purchase Orders exist. And QuickBooks will ask you, do you want to receive against one or more of these orders? Once again, if you created a purchase order for the items that you just received, click Yes. And that will bring you back to the Open Purchase Orders dialog box that you just saw a moment ago. So place a check mark in the far left column next to the purchase order that was used to place this order and then click OK. Now all of the information that was entered in the purchase order has now been entered into this bill. Now, when you receive your delivery, you may have received an invoice. Locate the date on that invoice and enter that date from the invoice in the date field on the bill. Now, there's also an invoice number on the invoice. Locate the invoice number and type that number into the reference number field. Now the reason why you have to add the invoice number to the reference field is because when you send in your payment, the vendor has to recognize which invoice you are paying, especially if you are paying more than one invoice. Now also, on the invoice, you should see the terms in which the payment is to be made. And to choose the appropriate term, click the drop down arrow in the terms field. The most popular terms are net 15, net 30, and net 60. You must locate the terms that have been dictated on the invoice and select it from the drop down menu. If the terms are not listed in this default menu, click the add new button to create a new set of terms. For this example, I'm going to choose net 30, which is one of the most popular terms that vendors use. Now as soon as I select the term net 30, if you look in the bill due field, you'll see that the bill due date is exactly 30 days from the date of the invoice. Now if you need to type a memo, you can do so in the memo field here. Now up until this point, I have assumed that the prices on your purchase order were the same prices that are on the invoice. However, what if the prices have changed? If the prices have changed, you need to change the amount due field and you also need to change the price in the amount field. So let's assume that Dewey Company is now charging $30 per dozen of pink roses. Since my fictitious company, Joe's Landscaping, has purchased two dozen of red roses, that means the total amount due is now going to be $60. So I have to change the total amount due on the invoice from $50 to $60. And that amount goes here. Now I also have to change the amount on the line item from 50 to 60. And after I do that, the cost would automatically adjust from $25 to $30. Now if you are purchasing these items for a particular customer, select that customer from the drop down menu in the customer job column. And after you select that customer, a check mark will automatically be placed in the billable column. So what's going to happen is, when you create an invoice for the customer that you have just selected, QuickBooks will remind you that this customer has a billable item that you can add to that invoice. Now that you have entered all of the information into the pertinent fields, click Save and Close at the bottom. 
Okay, now it's time to pay the bills. So click the Pay Bills icon on the QuickBooks homepage. Now you can filter this list by viewing bills that are due to a certain vendor. Simply click the drop down arrow in the Filter By field and then select the vendor that you want to see in the list. Now there's also a couple of options in which you can sort this list. You can sort it by the due date, discount date, vendor, or the amount due. Select your option. Now the default option is due date and I'm going to leave it as such for this example. Now the default option to preview all of the bills that are to be paid is the show all bills option. Or you can filter the list by showing bills that are due on or before a particular date. Simply select that option and choose the due date that you want to show. Now we must choose which bills we are going to pay. If you're going to pay all of the bills in the list, you can click the Select All Bills button and a check mark will be placed in the far left column next to all of the bills in the list. Or you can select each bill individually by placing a check mark in the far left column next to the bill that you want to pay. Now at the very bottom left of the screen, you're going to see a Payment Date field. Select the current date. Next, choose the method of payment that you're going to make to the vendor. In this example, I'm going to choose check. Now if you're going to print the checks, make sure you select to be printed. Now if your company has more than one bank account, make sure that you select that account from the drop down menu in the account field. When you are done with all of those fields, click pay selected bills at the bottom right. Now you're going to see the payment summary dialog box. And this dialog box is going to list each bill that you selected in the previous screen. If you forgot to pay a bill, click the Pay More Bills button and that will bring you back to the previous screen that you just saw. However, if you are ready to print your checks, click Print Checks. Now here you have the Select Checks to Print dialog box. Make sure that you select the correct bank account from the Bank Account field if your company uses more than one bank account. The check number in the first check number field should match the number that's on the actual check that you are about to place into your printer. So make sure that the actual check number and the number in the first check number field are the same. Now by default, QuickBooks places a check mark in the far left column next to each check that's going to be printed. However, if there's a check or two that you do not want to print, remove the check mark by clicking in that column to remove the check mark and that check will not be printed. Once you have selected all of your checks that are going to be printed, click OK. Now here's the Print Checks dialog box. Make sure that you select the proper printer and also make sure that the proper check style has been selected. You have the choices of voucher, standard, or wallet. Make sure that you match the check style icons to the actual check style that you have in your printer. Once you've done that, click print and your checks will start printing. Now here's the print checks confirmation dialog box. This will appear after you have printed your checks. If for some reason one of the checks did not print properly, place a check mark in the reprint column to reprint that check and then click OK. Now if all of your checks have printed properly, do not place a check mark in the reprint column. Simply click OK. And now you have paid your bills for the inventory that you have received from your vendor. If you have any questions, please send me an email. Once again, this is James Fox and I'll see you next time.